This is The Competitive Edge and a live case study with Spencer Fry. Welcome to The Competitive Edge. My name is Scott Britton and I'm here to help you answer a question that we all have. How can I get an edge in my business and life? Each week we're going to uncover how some of the most successful and inspiring entrepreneurs, entertainers, and thought leaders get an edge so you too can reach your full potential. Thanks for tuning in today. Now let's get started. What's up, everybody? Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode. Today, I got something brand new coming your way. The goal of the show has always been to provide as many actionable insights and ideas that you can apply to your business and life. Well, in my experience, one of the best ways I've found to learn new things and actually implement them is to get access to case studies of people who are trying to accomplish the same thing that I am. Today, I want to experiment with a live case study on the show by inviting one of our listeners to get real-time advice from a world-class expert. Our guest today is going to be Daniel Arzguara, the founder of biznobo.com, a social marketing platform that helps businesses connect with new customers. Daniel is in the nascent stages of bootstrapping this business and is trying to figure out questions like the best way to get first customers, as well as manage the zillion different things he could be spending his time on as a two-man operation. To advise him through the process, I've brought on my buddy, Spencer Fry. Beyond being an awesome guy, Spencer's a great entrepreneur who's bootstrapped multiple companies to profitability, including Carbon Made and Uncover, his current startup, after selling his first company, Typefrag. Spence really knows this stuff, and I love this conversation because we really dive into some tough questions like how to start charging, where to get your first customers, and what you should be focused on at certain milestones of your business in the early days. It's a goodie, especially for entrepreneurs who are trying to get through those initial stages of building their company. Before we dive into the meat of this episode, I'd really quickly just love to get your opinion on this expert case study feedback show format that you're going to listen to today. Let me know what you think by shooting me an email at scott at life-longlearner.com or just hitting me up at Twitter at my Twitter handle, Britton, which is just my last name, B-R-I-T-T-O-N. Alrighty, let's go ahead and hear this live case study on bootstrapping with Spencer Fry. All right, what is up, Daniel Spencer? How are you guys doing? Doing great, man. Thanks. Hey, man, I'm doing good. Thanks for having us. Of course. I'm excited as this is a new format for the Competitive Edge. And Daniel, why don't we just go ahead and give everybody a little bit of a background on exactly what your business, Biznobo, is? Um, okay, yeah. So we have created a platform. Uh, right now, it's a web app. But uh, what we do is we help our customers, right? So if you if you come to us as a Biznobo customer, and let's say, for example, you are a hotel owner, or maybe you're the owner of a restaurant, right? Uh, we help you connect with your ideal customer through social media. So whether you're using Facebook or Pinterest or t- Twitter, um, let's say someone just to give you a quick example, it's uh, it's in Les, um, you know in New York, and they're about to make a trip to Miami, and they'll post it on the Twitter feed, and they put like I'm about to go to Miami, and let's say you are a customer of Biz Noble and you're tracking. We allow you to track conversations on social media. And we see that someone posted, I'm coming to Miami. So one of the things we can allow you to do is through this feed, you can connect with that person. And uh, as a restaurant owner, you can be like, hey, pass by our restaurant or pass by our hotel and first drink is on us. So it's a great first experience that you can create with a customer that otherwise you wouldn't have been able to create. So that's kind of, you know, the 30,000 foot view of uh, what we allowed our customers to do is to really connect with their ideal customers through social media. I love it, man. And before we kind of dive in more to that, the purpose of this type of new case study feedback episode is really to kind of talk about where your business is and where you want to take it and get actionable advice on that. So maybe we could give a little bit of color to the audience right now. Maybe when you got started on Biznobo and the state of the business today in terms of who else is working on this? Do you guys have paying customers? Those, that type of information. Okay, that's great. Uh, so we started working on Ms. Noble um, about six to seven months ago, right? That's kind of when we had the idea. And we, we've seen other tools um, in the market that are similar. 
But again, they were more for the enterprise solution and they cost a lot of money. And we thought it was a great idea to help, you know, help us, uh, help any type of business communicate through social media. So then I went ahead and uh, I approached my, uh, my business partner and he became an investor in the company, right? So that's kind of what the team is right now. It's me and my, uh, and my business partner, who's also happens to be an investor. I'm more of a technical co-founder and the marketing part of the company. And he's more of like the social part of the company. So, you know, if, if he has to go and make relationships, he's very good at that. So, you know, as of right now, that's kind of where we are, right? And we are at a stage where I think a lot of new businesses are where we are bootstrapping everything ourselves. It's very tough, you know, it's like the ramen noodle stage of the company, I like to call it, where, you know, you're just working 24 hours eating ramen noodles and you don't, you're not seeing much, but you know, you know, it's coming. Uh, we've had beta testers. So, you know, as, as the software gets built, we've been building a list little by little. And, you know, we let people just use it and we've been getting feedback and from that feedback, we've been iterating. But I think we're at a point right now where it's at a crux, right? Well, we, we, we feel we're ready to, um, to start at least offering a product that we can charge for it. You know, and you, you hear a lot of people talk in, uh, in business that, hey, you know, you should probably release your application or whatever you're creating way before you feel comfortable when you think it's ready. And that's exactly where we are. We think we have something and it's good but man i mean if you give me another year i would love to have that year right to like perfect it and add more features or whatever else but you know i think we're ready right now to uh, to start launching it but it's definitely an uncomfortable position to be especially when you know we don't have the capital or the resources that a lot of other companies might have so you know that's kind of a you know a rough background of where we are and where we come from as a, as a company so are you guys currently um charging anyone for it or is it mainly just a free offering at this point yeah so as of, as of right now we are not charging anyone for it and that's you know that's part of uh, one of the main questions we had coming into the show you know what what were your thoughts on this should we start charging how should we start charging i mean we have a lot of questions around that area of charging you know right do people yeah. perceive like do your current customers perceive it as a free tool going forward or do they do they know that at one point they're going to have to start paying for it yeah, so they, they know that at one point they, they have to start paying for it. Uh, one of the things that we, we made like, a, you know, kind of like a ritual to do was anyone who we allowed into the beta tester, we like, look, we allowed you to, to start using the tool for, uh, for free, but you have to get on, the, on a call with us and at least talk for 30 minutes. So, and we, we go through um, a series of questions with them, kind of asking them, hey, you know, what's your ideal use for this tool, right? So like when you signed up, why did you sign up? Like, were you doing it mainly for the tracking purposes? Were you doing it for the scheduling purposes? Were you doing it to connect with customers on social media? Did, did you know you should be on social media, but didn't have an idea how to manage it all? So, you know, we asked them a few questions and, um, and we told them, you know, kind of like the price range even of what we were thinking, right? So we're like, look, other tools similar to ours are charging you for all the features that we offer you know, easily uh, in the hundreds to thousands of dollars per month, right? So and a company, for example, that's similar to us and a competition uh, might be something like Hootsuite, right? That's another uh, social platform company. And, you know, for the enterprise customer, that's great, you know, and if you can pay for that, that's great. But we really want to come and disrupt the market and give a solution for the small to medium-sized businesses that, hey, you know what, maybe they don't have all, all that money to pay, but they still want to get at least um, the same tools that, you know, the, the big guys are doing. And, uh, I think technology allows us to, to do that. I think technology allows us to bring and level the playing field. And that's, you know, that's what we want. So we told them, you know, Hey, this is kind of what we're planning to, um, you know, to charge for it. And we always gauge feedback. So to some people, we might say, Hey, we're, we're planning to charge 497 per year. And we kind of feel them out to see like, Oh uh -huh, man. Okay. Okay. I, I think about it. Or we might be like, Hey, we're planning to charge 297. And they're like, Oh wow, that's great. You know, if you guys do that, you guys are going to have a, uh, you know, I hope you guys can get a lot of servers because you guys are going to have a bunch of customers. So that's just some of the, right. Some of the feedback we've gotten. Right. So we kind of gauge that out. And how many, uh, about how many customers are we talking about so far? That you've got on the phone with oh man uh for sure for sure at least above 60 we would say 60 something yeah so i guess spence i'm i'm curious to hear your opinion you know what for people that are potentially looking to get some feedback on their product like is beta testing before you charge a good idea and really like what is the purpose what is the purpose of this point phase because i think that really kind of determines whether it may like to what scale 
it makes sense to give the product away for free and how much feedback you really need before you should dive in and start charging. Right. So, so I've always been an advocate of charging from day one, um, especially as a bootstrapping company, because even if you know you only have like a handful of paying customers in the first few months, you still got a little bit of revenue coming in that you can use for marketing and every other things. Um, you know, the downside is that um, your product might not be good enough yet, so you might not have many paying customers. But I think that's kind of um, telling it in and of itself, and it's something that like if people aren't signing up for and not paying for, then you can kind of you know get on the phone with them for 30 minutes and find out why and then begin to kind of build out those features and hopefully then convert them into paying customers. Um, I think it's difficult to, I think it's always difficult to kind of launch a free product from day one because then it's, you're never completely certain that those, you know, free trial customers are going to convert down the road. You know, even if they're happy at 290 a year or whatever over the phone, when you actually put like a credit card form in front of them, they may or may not sign up. Um, so for me, it's always just work been worrisome to not charge from day one. You know, there's always, you can always kind of do the freemium model where you have kind of like a set of free features that you launch and then you have like a, or sorry, a set of paid features that you launch on top of your free. Um, and even if like not many people are converting to them, you can kind of see what's working, what's not working. So, I mean, it's really up to the kind of like up to the, uh, founder, but I've always been kind of like a champion of uh, charging from day one. Daniel, do you think that you have enough feedback in terms of pricing and why people are using this product among 60 customers to start charging? Definitely. And that's part of uh, you know, why, why I'm so glad I'm on the call today. But yeah, that's definitely where I think you know, the fork in the road right now is. And that's kind of where me and my, uh, my co-founder, that's the decision that you know, that we've been kind of moving towards is like, hey, man, I think, you know what? I think it's time. Like, yeah, I get it. I don't think we'll ever feel like the product is perfect. But hey, yeah, let's let's start charging and see where this like, you know, rubber meets the road type thing and see if this is real and, you know, and see if we can uh, really take it somewhere. Spence, what would right. your advice be at this point for somebody who's ready to turn on the jets? Um, I mean, the advice would just be to pull the trigger, honestly, because it's definitely a scary thing. You know, um, ask, like sending, blasting an email out to 60 com- customers saying, hey, starting in like one month or now or whatever, we're charging you this amount, you know, fill in your credit card information. You know, it's just a really scary moment for any entrepreneur because, you know, potentially zero yeah. could come back and pay. <laughs> um, so that's obviously like the worst nightmare. But I think it's also something that like if you do that and zero come back and pay for it, then you know that that's information you want today rather than like, a month from now or three months from now or six months from now. Um, so, I mean, the biggest advice would just be like, pull the trigger. Like I would, I would have done it yesterday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Would it make sense to reach out to completely new customers, uh, that aren't currently engaged with the pro- product and start price testing with them before you go back to the 60 people beta testing? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'd see the advantage to that of that. Um, I mean, you have 60 customers and say like 50% or more active, you know, I, I would go with the guys that are actually using your product first. Um, I don't think there's, I mean, if someone doesn't want to pay for your product, then like you don't need to have them as a customer. Right. So like right. if you offend or like, you know, not offend, but if like half of them don't sign up, then, you know, that's too bad for them. Um, but I don't, I don't know if like going out to new customers is necessarily going to help you. Mm. Yeah, it makes sense. Daniel, let me ask you. So, you know, having this bit of advice at this moment, like what, what would be your game plan in the next three days, uh, for making the shift? Uh, okay. So, I mean, and, and we've been, like I said, you know, even before the call, we, we kind of knew going in that, Hey, this is already where we want to start heading. So, you know, so it's it's just great to get the feedback from Spencer uh, that it's like, yeah, man, you guys should definitely just go for it, right? It gives us kind of a more of a, you know, it's more 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 reassuring that we're making the right decision right now and being like, hey, you should have done this yesterday. And we're like, yeah, I know. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, moving forward, one of the things that we've uh, we've put in place is, you know, we, we're already, okay, so the the next choice we we've had to like play with is how do we go about it right so there there's many models right um that we can do we can go with hey free trial and then at the end of the free trial onboard right so like we 
we convince you through the free trial that, you know, through like, hey, look at all the value you can get from us, right? And it's, that'll be our, you know, that'll be on our shoulders to convince you during that free trial to, hey, you know, keep staying a paying customer, right? And that's, that's one way to go about it. So free trial to pay customer. Uh, it could be free trial, no credit card, right? And then to free customer, which is a completely different person than free trial with credit card. And then at the end, uh, you're just going to get automatically charged or not allowed you to have access to the product and then sell you like through email marketing, right? During whatever time period, right? So we'll have an email, email marketing campaign, which is kind of what uh, some products do like lead pages. Uh, they don't have any trial, right? So they don't have any free trial at all. And all you have to do is you have, you know, they'll email market to you. And at some point you decide, hey, you know what? I think I've seen enough. I want to go ahead and buy it. And that's the only way that you get access to the product. And, um, you know, I, I think we're leaning more towards that because we're really good at email marketing. At least we feel like it. We've done that before. And uh, the free trial was just during the beginning stages to, to see people use it and see how, how the product was used, see if it scaled, see if there were any bugs. That's mainly what we really wanted to get out of it. But, um, you know, I, I mean, that's, that's where we think we, we wanted to head. It's just market to you, close the product out. And the only way you have access is if you pay. And then, you know, there's other features as far as like, hey, do we want to pay monthly or do we really try to get that customer to pay yearly for two ninety seven? and then downsell them right to a monthly so like you know either 47 or whatever a month i mean that's these are all the things we're kind of thinking about you know just kind right. of so you guys get an idea of where we are sure and before we dive tactically into you know spent what spencer thinks about each one of those different approaches i'd love to hear just like the exact steps that you're planning on taking with these 60 people that you already are using your product over the next week let's call it to broach the fact that this is now a paid product and in order to continue to use it, you're going to have to pay. Well, um, so, I mean, I, I'm just not going to come out of the blue and be like, Hey guys, you know, what's up? You got to pay. Uh, you know, so we're, we're going to email them. Right. And then tell them kind of our, our game plan. Hey guys, you know, uh, this noble is getting to the stage that we're out of beta right now. Uh, we've enjoyed having you guys and we really appreciated all the feedback maybe we'll run a special promotion for them since they were, you know, beta testers. And, you know, it, it's kind of an ordeal in, in, its, in and of itself to be a beta tester because, you know, you're kind of going through like the tribulations with, uh, with the founders themselves and going through all the bugs. And, you know, you're using this product that's half working, half not half the time. So, you know, up to, to their, to them, you know, we might launch kind of a promotion, but uh, we'll tell them, Hey, go to this page and, you know, we might um, hook up with Stripe and, you know, just so we can start charging them already. And be like, hey, you know, put in your, you have 30 days to input your, your credit card information. And after 30 days, we just want you to know that, uh, you know, if it's not there in the, in the system, then, you know, no, no hard feelings, but, uh, the, the product is going to go, you know, at least for you, you won't be able to use it anymore, you know? And then during those 30 days, we might, you know, do the same thing as far as email campaign and, you know, make, make sure that, you know, if, if, you know, if we see that by 14 days, someone's using the product, but hasn't put in their credit card, we might call them on the phone. That might be something we do and be like, Hey, you know, we saw that you're using the product. Are you planning to stay with us? We've sent you a few emails. You still haven't input in your, your credit card information. I mean, that's just some of the ideas that come to mind right now. Thoughts, Spence? No, I think that sounds good. I would be kind of like, um, as clear as possible with the customers, you know, like, and don't let them, don't give them too much time to act. Um, okay. In the sense that like, I wouldn't say, you know, this is turning off tomorrow, but I wouldn't like, I would put some sort of strict deadline on it just because otherwise people are just going to procrastinate. Um, yeah. I mean, you find, you find this like all the time. Like if someone's like, yeah, I'll get back to you or, or you have until like, Oh, sometime next week, no one's ever going to like, they're going to wait till last minute. Right. right. Um, but if you kind of put a strict sort of deadline and then you can always kind of extend the deadline. Um, but just giving something, some kind of specific date or like time in the future, um, just cause it kind of forces them to act. I mean, what, what, what would you suggest is a good deadline, like seven days, five days, or as soon as possible? I think seven days or five days is maybe too aggressive just because it's sort of out of nowhere. Right. Cause like they've been on beta customer for a while and then you're like, Oh, seven days from now you have to pay. Like I, I might stretch it out to, to like two to four weeks, somewhere in that range, but I would have okay. something pretty specific um, okay. in mind. And you could like tie it around, like, I don't know if like 
if your six months anniversary is coming up in like three weeks, you could be like, we're, you know, we're turning six months old. And on this date, um, at that, in that time, we're going to, you know, turn on paid accounts or whatever. So uh, make it like an event based. Yeah. Do it something like that. So it's not just like an arbitrary, like date in the future. Um, I think it, that also kind of gives it a little bit more like credence and, and to put, as opposed to just like picking a random date, like you're, it's actually around something that matters to the company. But yeah, and then back in terms of like free trial or, you know, only paid accounts, I think it really depends on the service. Um, we can get into it later more, but I would say that a free trial kind of, to me, like would make more sense just because it is a product that you'd want to share. Um, you'd want to try out, like you might try out multiple versions, like you might try out yours, you might try out Hootsuite, you might try out, try out some other ones. And if yours doesn't have a free trial, but those ones do it mm -hmm. might kind of block you from getting those customers that are like maybe a little bit indecisive. And then you might also grab their email addresses so then you can like upmarket them. So for me, okay. I'd, prob I'd probably go free trial just based right. on that alone. Yeah. Okay. One question that I have is in terms of free trial spends, like is there a certain time period that makes sense based on your product or based on the actions that users take? I'm just trying to kind of wrap right. my head around, you know, how we should think about free trial in terms of the length of the time period. I think it really depends on your business and, and how soon people become engaged with it. Um, like I know, or, or become hooked where they can't go back, you know, like harvest and other companies do 30 days. Whereas I think, um, base camp does 45 or 60, I think they do 60 days now. Um, and I'm sure that there's a, there's a specific reason why they do 60 days is because, you know, by the time you've been signed up for Basecamp for 60 days, you're like hooked and now you have to pay. Um, and I'm sure with Harvest, they do 30 days because within 30 days, you're hooked and you have to pay. So I, I would look at like Biznobo's kind of metrics around that. And like, when is it, do you, when do you see people kind of hooked to Biznobo and like, you know, ready to use it and ready to pay? So that okay. could be two weeks, that could be 30 days, that could be 45 days, you know. You, don't, you just don't want to do it before they're hooked, right? They're hooked. Yeah. yeah. Daniel, I know one of the questions that you had prior to the call is as, as a founder who is bootstrapping, who has only one other person working on this, where should I spend my time? I'd love for yeah. you to just talk about the various activities that you're currently engaging in and perhaps any questions that you have about, you know, is this really the best use of dividing my finite resources and time? Yeah. And, uh, and that is actually a, a huge, uh, not not roadblock or anything but it's 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 something that we've never really had to deal with until like you're doing it you don't really you know see how hard it is um going at it because we we've worked with other companies before but you know once you have a team it's, it's so much different and then you go on, on your own and you have this idealistic view of you know like rainbows and unicorns and it's not really like that right it's uh it's pretty hard just being there and doing things um so yeah I'm more technical, right? I'm more technical and more geared towards marketing. And my business partner is really good at, uh, you know, creating relationships. But until now, right, it's felt like, you know, right now he, he feels that he can contribute more just because we're at that point where we're like, okay, I can get people in, you know, I can start at least promoting this. Um, but until now, it was difficult for him to like even find out, you know, where do I go? You know, like, what do I do? Like, where can I provide like the most, uh, value to, to the company right now, right? And I would, I would feel the same way. I'm like, I didn't know where exactly what to tell them. And again, we we're strapped for, for capital. We're strapped as far as resources. You know, we don't know if like, Hey, should we just go and try to like raise money for this? Or should we wait and see if we can like get customers on board and, you know, kind of like what Spencer said, like start charging. And then from that point on, like, you know, see if we can bootstrap it. And if we don't need to raise any money, then better, you know, like we, we keep the company for ourselves. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's a big, big deal for us. Like what, where should we be focusing on? Should we be focusing on like, Hey, put, yeah, like, you know, put development on like hold for a second and focus on marketing and reach out, you know, for, for a while, yeah. you know, while, while you guys are really like taking this to the next level. Well, I think it like, as soon as you guys start to charge customers and you see that people are paying for it, um, you'll know that the product is good enough at this point, um, to focus your attention on sales and marketing. Um, but you know, if you, if you, if you start charging customers and no one comes back and to pay, then you might need to go back to the product. Right? right. So I think as soon as that, again, you'll, you'll have so much more information once people are starting to pay for the, pay for the thing. Right. One of my uh, favorite 
quotes actually like from a friend of mine is uh, that revenue equals resources. Uh, and it's just so true, right? So as soon as you have some money coming in the door, you'll be able to spend more money on like Google AdWords or like press or marketing or whatever. So, I mean, I think you're going to be able to be in such a better position once you have paying customers. So our main focus right now, I mean, the only thing we should be worrying about is like, hey, get that first dollar in the door, right? Yeah. I mean, the first dollar is like so many people can't even get the first dollar, you know? And yeah. as soon as you have that, like I would, I would be happy in your shoes if we had like one paying customer paying us like paying that like $500 a year, right? Because then you know that at least you're providing value for one person and then you just have to find more people like that. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Guys, I think we're kind of at the periphery here of an important topic, it, which is where do you go to get these initial customers? And Spence, perhaps you could talk a little bit about how you've gotten your first customers for what you're currently working on on Cover. And then we can hear from Daniel House. He's going about getting these 60 people to try his product. Sure. Yeah. I've, um, so I've started a few companies in the past. So I've had a, like a lot of in your city, actually. And so I've, I've made a lot of relationships in like kind of the New York City tech community. Um, and Uncover, which is my current product, is uh, I think just a simple tool to offer personal rewards to your employees. So I knew a bunch of founders um, in and around New York. And kind of during the beginning, like when I was figuring out what Uncover was going to be, um, I would reach out to them and show them kind of like the idea that I had. And then, you know, as soon as, you know, half a dozen or a dozen thought it was a good idea, I built the site. Um, started charging from day one and got that initial kind of dozen or so customers on board. Um, and then it was just a question of finding more people like them. And so our market's basically companies between 25 and 75 employees. And it was just targeting like a heavy volume of those size companies, uh, mostly in like the tech or ad agency sector. But for me, it was really just being able to leverage my past network, which is not, you know, typically possible for new entrepreneurs. Um, so I would like to hear kind of where you got your first 60 and then we can talk more about that. Okay. Um, so, I mean, being, being a social network, uh, what, one of the things like we are very uh, adamant about, it's like, hey, we want to create a product that we use ourselves, right? So like a lot of companies build a product and they don't even use it themselves, right? Which right. says a lot about the product. I don't know. Uh, but we, we're like, hey, you know, if, if we're really building this. Let's see, let's see if it works, you know? So like, let's reach out. Let's use the product to like find people. So we would type in, right? So we have this um, part of our product is um, is monitoring, right? So you can monitor the conversation on different uh, like social medias, and uh, you know we will put like the competition name, right? So anyone who's talking about Hootsuite or anyone who mentions a keyword like Hootsuite or Hootsuite versus, right? And uh, anything like that, right? Or buffer versus buffer or, right? We would like kind of chime in and be like, hey, you know what? Like that's those are great products. Uh, if you want, you know, we're right now in beta, and uh, our product is best noble. How about you check it out? So we would just, you know, kind of be like nonchalant. We tell them like, hey, you know, we we have this product that seems similar to what you're looking for right now. And since they seem indecisive anyway, since they're asking one of those like or or versus questions, we knew they were on the fence, right? So that's kind of like the first thing I guess you can call like little growth hack we did. Um, after that, you know, as we kept adding and growing. So in the last 30 days, we've been focusing on growing our network, right? So on Twitter, we went from zero to we're almost at a thousand followers right now. Not paid. We didn't pay for any of that. Those are just like, you know, hard work. And we added people that, you know, that we thought were relevant to us. So like, you know, anyone who's following Buffer or Hootsuite, those are probably relevant to us. And a lot of the things we did, you know. I mean, which wasn't possible before. Uh, it's like, how the hell do you know who's who's customer? Well, in today's world, you can find out, right? Like, go to like Buffer's uh, Twitter feed, and whoever's following them, they're probably a customer, or at least you know, there's someone who's interested in what you're selling, since we're very similar, right? So we're like, okay, well, let's start adding them, you know, and let's start seeing if we can communicate with them, right? Yep. So we we started doing exactly that, and uh, you know, little by little, all we had is a, uh, and even till today. All we really have is a link on our Twitter bio that says biznoble.com. And we've never really promoted it or anything like that. Uh, and all the people that have come have come through there. That's it. That's the only way we actually, we never like done like any outreach. Uh, we thought about like guest blogging, right? So like, that's one of the things that we're like, you know, battling about now. Should we guest blog? Should we 
aggregate all like great content and become an authority site as far as like, what social media is, but not write any content ourselves, uh, you know, just so we can start driving traffic organically. Should we go down the right uh, route of, uh, you know, Twitter as of right now just came up with their um, advertisement platform. So we're like, should we do that? You know, um, but as of right now, that's the only way we've actually gotten customers, right? I mean, another way that we're thinking of is through, um, like making strategic partnerships, right? So if there's a company that has delivered some value that our customer gets, but would also get value from our tool, right? Making some type of strategic partnership and then maybe doing a mail out for them or them mailing out for us. I mean, these are kind of the things we're thinking about right now. Yeah, I mean, um, those sounds like those all sound like great ideas. Um, you know, as soon as you start to try them, you'll see kind of what works and what doesn't work. And I don't see why why you wouldn't try them all. You know? Yeah. I think a great exercise for anybody who's just starting out is to essentially create what they perceive as their ideal customer avatar, right? So my perfect customer is a business with 25 to 75 employees. Like you said, Spencer, they love their employees. They work in New York city. They probably have an ad agency or a technology company. They've invested in the X type of services in the past, but weren't happy for X, Y, Z, and then go and find where those people hang out. I think it's a great idea to kind of reverse engineer where your customers might be by seeing if they're following competitors or whatever it is. But, you know, other things that you can do is go to forums, see who's having conversations about this, make a hit list of every single company that you can find, uh, which again, you could also use Twitter to identify these companies and send emails to the founders, um, send, send cold emails that basically say like, Hey, I, I saw a buffer or I saw you're following X, Y, Z, or I saw that you're, I perhaps you're interested in this topic because, because of this action that I noticed online, I wanted to ask you a question about, you know, are you currently interested in investing in this or whatever it is? Um, I think just like establishing that foundation, foundational hypothesis of yeah. exactly who you're trying to serve is just at the core of deciding what, what strategies you can use to go and reach these people where they are. Now, um, Kind of from what you said, Scott. So let's say we, we find, you know, Buffer has all these customers, right? Are you saying we can, you know, because I mean, a lot of them, they have a link just like we do, right? Where they're like, oh, we're the CEO. We work for this company. So we will go to that site, find that information as far as their email and then email that person specifically and then make a list of like maybe like a thousand people to email, cold email. Yeah, I guess it really depends. Like what is the, I think a huge... It's, you know, right now we're talking about like outbound, like lead generation versus uh, inbound marketing. Um, right. you, you know, it sounds like right now you guys for have been focusing on getting people to come to your website and then ideally fill out a form that, so that you can talk to them and get them on your product. Well, the question that I would ask you is like, are the people that your product makes perfect sense for, for your ideal customers, the type of people that are actively looking for these products? Or are they the type of people that are focused on running their business? And I'll give you an example to tell you exactly what I'm talking about. So at Single Platform, uh, which was the last software company I was with, we initially started selling to restaurants and then eventually spas and salons. The owner of a restaurant is not actively searching for the best way to manage their online presence across a variety of platforms. These guys are making sure that the, the open sign on their door is turned turn the right way, that the glasses are clean and that people are showing up to work on time. Running a business like that is incredibly hard. So for us to try to focus on inbound marketing wasn't necessarily as effective at the onset as trying to penetrate the existing workflow of these people, which manifested itself in the form of cold calls and emails. So my question for you is like, what are the people that are ideal for this product that are willing to pay the price, willing to see the value and pay the price that you want to charge? Right. Where, where, where can you penetrate their workflow? Is it, does it make more sense to do outbound or does it make more sense to try to get these people interested in an inbound funnel? Yeah. I mean, and just to give you an example from one of those calls that we've had, right. With uh, one of our, um, beta testers, uh, this, this guy, you know, we got him on the phone and, uh, and, and, you know, but I think, you know, we've been, we have like two types of customers at this point that we have been able to identify. First of all, are like the people like pretty similar to you, actually, that 
they have their own business and uh, maybe they've heard of social media or whatever, but they're like, they have no idea why this is even, why they should even be on it. Or if they do, they're like, ah, they have no idea where to even begin, right? So that's like the first type of customer. It's just someone who who's heard of the term social media, but it's just like, you know, they don't really understand it and they have their own business to run. So, hey, you know what? Like, that's not even on their radar at this moment. Not not like that. Uh, the other type of customer that uh, that we've identified is someone who has type of a, some type of agency, right? So they have clients and they do this work for other companies or like other customers that they have. They're like, oh, we'll set up your social media for you and we'll run it for you. So those are like the two types. But uh, the more interesting type is this, this person that we talked to, he was the head of a mall chain around the United States. So he, he deals, you know, with malls and he was the manager of, I, I don't know, he, he told me they have malls in all of the United States, big malls, right? So he's like, you know, there's always like a Macy's or a Bloomingdale's or a Victoria's Secret in the malls. And those big companies, you know, they've got their marketing and, you know, everything figured out. And, you know, they just get the space in the mall and, you know, they can go ahead and do their own thing because they, they've done it before and they have their own processes. But, you know, the little kiosk, uh, when you go through the mall that are in the middle, those are kind of like mom and pop stores. And they are not necessarily have like processes or systems in, in place. Uh, and a lot of the times what he has to do as the manager of the mall, he's like educating them like, hey, you know what? Create a social media account, create a Twitter account, create a Facebook account. So, you know, he he kind of gave us an idea. It's like, man, you know, there is all these people that, you know, really that understand or maybe just are understanding that they should get on social but they're not you know they don't know where to start you know if it wasn't for this guy telling them that hey you should create a twitter account they wouldn't have done that right so i think you're right i think maybe we have to do some outbound outbound marketing and start reaching out instead of doing inbound and yeah. uh letting our customers come to us any thoughts spence yeah i mean i think like for the kind of b2b businesses that you're in and i'm in um Outbound just seems to work a lot better. Um, there's just, you're not getting enough inbound traffic. At least we're not where for it to be effective. Uh, and it seems like if you kind of find the person or find people that are looking for something similar to your, what you're building, or at least um, might want it, it's just easier to just kind of reach out to them, email them. Um, I don't really like doing phone calls just because I prefer email, but uh, you know, reaching out always seems to be effective for B2B stuff. I think an important thing to, to to do too is is think about your price, right? So you you said that comparative solutions are charging two hundred ninety seven dollars, four hundred ninety seven dollars a month, whatever it is, for yeah. access to their product. For somebody who's maybe never heard of you, who just arrived on your site because of a Twitter link, for them to open up the wallet for and spend two hundred ninety seven dollars, or even do a free trial that indicate that's indicates that they'll eventually have to pay $297. That's a big challenge, man. That's a lot of money. Right. And the other question that I, I'd ask yourself is like, which people are going to be easier to sell? Um, are they people that are already engaged in social media that are potentially on an incumbent platform? Or are there people that know they need to be on social, know that this is going to drive move the needle for their business, but they don't know where to start and they don't know how to leverage it? And the only way that you're going to find out is basically testing both sides and trying to get both types of customers in there uh, and having interactions with them to see who's going to be the easiest to convert. You know, I heard Scott, I heard uh, that you were pretty good at cold call. I mean, not cold calling, but like cold emailing. If you were to give us a, you know, step-by-step, -step, hey, like th these are the three first emails I would send someone, right? And let's say we start, you know, just start out outbound marketing and start just emailing people, you know, that we feel are potential good customers for us. What would be like the first step you would do? Like, as far as like, Hey, look, this is find your email, tell them this, and then go from there. And, you know, here's how you can onboard them onto like at least trying your product out or something like that. What would be your suggestion for that? Yeah, totally. So I think that like a, a good first step would be to, it sounds like right now there's two cohorts of potential potential customers that you could go after, right? The people that are already know what's available out there, they know the value in it, and they, they're they just trying to find the best solution that fits their needs and price criteria. And then right. there's the other people, the, maybe the small businesses that don't necessarily know as much about social media, but your service can deliver a ton of value to them and you can educate them. What I would do is go and create a hit list of a hundred people to reach out to on both sides, right? So, you, so you're kind of like testing 
which customer segment is going to be better. And then I would break that cohort up into like three, each one of those into two or three different types of cold approaches. Uh, and I'd start, I'd probably start with email because generally people like to communicate asynchronously versus you interrupting their day via cold call, especially if we're talking about technology companies that okay. might not necessarily be the same for small businesses. But then I would, then I would, and on both sides, test multiple approaches. And so just to give you a few examples of uh, very specific examples of things you might be able to do is the first one that I like to do, uh, I just call it the bandage email framework. Um, and essentially it's find something online where they're under optimized that you can help alleviate that pain and point that out. So like an example would be, or find something that's indicative of interest. So that could be like, hey, I noticed that you got, let's say you, you go out and you find companies, you do like a Twitter search to find companies that are reaching out directly on Twitter. Um, and you're, and I'm assuming that your ability, your software in some ways allows people to do that in a more, in a simpler or more automated fashion. Yeah. Cool. So I would go and find companies that are trying to basically target people on Twitter or Facebook or whatever it is and say, Hey, I noticed that you guys are currently trying to engage with new customers on Twitter. Is, is this something that you're currently doing in an automated fashion? If not, okay. I think we might be able to help you out, scale this effort and ultimately drive more new customers. Do you have 10 minutes to talk next week? So basically the, the idea there is point out this thing that you can optimize that perhaps they might not be optimizing and then use that to start a dialogue and eventually show them and educate them around the service. Got Another thing you could do is just what I call the conversation builder. Um, and basically the idea here is that if you send somebody like a Bill Shakespeare 15 line email, they're not going to read it because everybody's busy and they don't know who you are. You're just like some random dude. Uh, a, a very simple thing you can do is just ask one question where the answer is an obvious yes. And that question is going to lead them down a logical path that they should get on the phone and talk to you about your business. So an example of this would be like sending an email of something that says, says like, are you currently trying to attract new customers online? Or like, maybe that's not the subject line. Maybe, maybe the subject line would be something like, um, new customers. You said that an example would be when targeting people that are visiting a city. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you could be like attracting, attracting out of town customers to be the subject line. And okay. then you could say something like, Hey, uh, are you guys currently trying to attract, uh, new customers that are coming into your city? Question mark. And send this from, you want to send this from your corporate email. So like at biznobo.com so that people okay. can like logically figure out who you are. And then in your email signature, have something like, you know, helping, helping businesses attract new customers on social platforms or something, something that's indicative of like what you are, what you do. So people can kind of discover that. And the, and most likely in many instances, like that answer is an obvious yes for most businesses. So that person would be like, yeah, sure. I am trying to attract new customers. And you could say, great. Uh, my business or, or Biznovo actually helps businesses just like yours reach new customers that are coming in from out of town in an automated fashion. Uh, Right now, we're working with some of the top businesses in the XYZ area, if you are, um, mm -hmm. or something like that that indicates that you're like a high value platform that they should trust. Um, do you have 10 minutes to discuss how we might be able to help you out? And then you get on the phone and try to schedule a demo. But like those are those two email frameworks are like, in my mind, they've worked incredibly well. Uh, another thing you could do as well is try to, try to, find some piece of evidence or case study where people are f attracting new customers online via social media that kind of gives credibility or credence to what you guys are trying to do and just send an email to a bunch of local businesses and say something like, Hey, are you guys trying to attract new customers online? Like I thought you might appreciate this case study if that happens to be the case. Uh, and then start a dialogue from there. And then eventually you're going to want to ask them to get on the phone and show them how you can help them do that.
Okay. Um, okay. So one question from that. Once I have them on the phone, what should be my goal? Should my goal be like get them to a free trial or should my goal be like continue the conversation or just try to close them right there right? or build that relationship to where they feel that, uh, Hey, you know what? Um, yeah, let's go for it. Like I, I let's, I'll, I'll pay for it. Yeah. So in my eyes, like if you're going to do free trial and I just wasn't thinking about this, I was just thinking about paying right off the get go. You right. should just direct people to the free trial. Okay. And then handhold them through the process. If okay. you're not doing a free trial and trying to sell, then you want to do like a screen share demo where you educate people about the product and exactly how it's going to make them money or save them time. Or save them. Okay. And sell yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. Okay. So, and, and, you know, just in your experience, let's say we send out like a hundred, like what's, what's been like your personal experience that'd be like, Hey man, you know what? Like out of a hundred, you can pretty much expect like 10 are going to like brush you off. Like 20 are going to call you back. You're pr if you get, you know, like what's a good metric that we should keep track of? Like, Hey, if you can get like one customer or two customers out of a hundred, Hey, you know what? Your goal is like, you can do that all day. So the industry standard for cold emails is seven to nine percent. Uh, I think that most people really suck at cold emails. So I think you can actually get much higher than that. One thing I will say is that your response rate goes up like 50% when you just follow up to somebody that hasn't gotten back to you. A lot of people assume that the reason that somebody hasn't gotten back to you is they're not interested. But in reality, like they could have been busy and forgot about it. They could have accidentally deleted it. They could be meaning to get back to you. And for some reason, just... It totally slipped their mind. Uh, so when you send those emails out, schedule a reminder or use like Boomerang or follow up CC or one of these services to reply to that original email if they haven't gotten back to you in three to seven days and ask them a question like, hey, just wanted to follow up my email below regarding getting you new customers online or regarding my social platform, whatever it is. Is this something you guys have ever considered? And you want to do that by replying directly to that email so that you're not asking that person to go in like four yeah. different places to get context for why you're emailing them. Got it. Okay. Spence, do you have any thoughts or any, any kind of metrics or baselines that people should be shooting for in this cold outreach? I mean, I think it always depends on how good your list of a hundred companies are or emails are. Um, the more specific you can get, the better your, um, conversion rate will be like, I know that, um, with uncover early on, I guess in the first six months, our percentage was a lot lower than it is nowadays. Um, uh, just cause nowadays we understand much better, like what type of companies want to sign up for our product. So I think like, um, you know, over time you can kind of improve that. Totally. And you can also really try to take advantage of network effects, right? So if you email me, let's say you're able to get a few initial customers that have some kind of credibility within a given niche or given market. If you send those emails out and you can point directly to people that are on the radars of people you're cold emailing, that's going to make you come from a place, a, a much more authoritative place. So yeah. depending upon like the type of business or whether it's online or offline, and when I'm coaching people on this, I always try to recommend like really trying to get good market share in a particular niche, whether that be a geographic region or a specific vertical or product. So like, let's say that you decide that, you know what, the people that get the most value out of this particular product that I have in the local market are hotels. So I'm going to just target hotels in the Orlando area, greater Orlando area or greater Miami area. And just try to get a couple of big names on board so that every single person that I reach out to after this, I can go ahead and say, yeah, we work with the Four Seasons or we work with the Ritz-Carlton or we work with the Wyndham or whatever it is mm -hmm. um, that is going to make all of a sudden the conversation a bit more serious and have you come from a place of, yeah, we're a real company. We provide real value. And these are people that pay for our service. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I think you can also use some of like, we've been really effective with this is... Um, reaching out to our current paid customers and having them refer us to companies that they think might be interested in our product. Um, you know, we currently don't offer anything in exchange, just kind of like a, Hey, we're bootstrapped, you know, could really use the help, you know, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Um, but it's also been really effective. So, so I'd say probably like a third of our customers 
come from existing customers wow. are referred to you by existing customers. Okay. Okay. I mean, man, I got like a, a like at least four <laughs> or five pages worth of notes here. And this has That's been, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this has really been awesome. And really what I would love to do is I, I would love to go out, right? Like you guys are giving me so much to do from, you know, start charging right away. So that's, you know, we got to set that up and uh, to start, you know, making this hit list and then reaching out. Um, you know, maybe Scott, like a after the call, maybe you can like uh, recommend me some resources where maybe we can learn a little bit more about cold email. I know like you're like the, you know, ninja at this, but uh, overall I would love to come back to you guys and be like, you know, I mean, we, we, we love putting like uh, one of my mentors, what he says is like, you know, uh, I forget where he, he, he references where the study comes from, but I, I'm, I'm, I would be lying to you if I knew where, what he says. But uh, one of the things he does say is uh, he's like, Hey, they did this study once and they found out that, um, you know, the, the, the biggest like differentiator between people that are successful and people that are not successful are the people that take action right away. Right. So like, you know, the gap between when you hear something and you take action, that's what like mostly defines successful people in the world. And uh, that's something that we take to heart. So I'm going to go ahead and implement this or as much as I can, you know, as soon as possible and then try to get back to you guys. I mean, if, you, if that would be okay with you guys and be like, Hey, look, this is where we are, man. Like we did this, this is the results we're getting. And, you know, just, just so you guys, you know, I mean, I, it would be great. Probably, I don't know, Scott, if you're doing kind of like a blog for like, Hey, here's where the businesses we've talked to are after they talk to us. But, uh, but if you are, you know, I would love to just get back to you just so you can like, you know, tell everyone else who's like listening to the car and I'll be like, Hey, you know what, this is what these guys did and check them out now. Like, you know, a month from now or two months from now. Absolutely, man. I think that'd be a really cool idea and just a really cool, yeah really cool practice to do for this new type of podcast format. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, man, like, I guess we're all kind of accountable in some way, knowing that this is going to be on iTunes. This is going to yeah. be on <laughs> thousands of people are going to listen to this, which is, which is very, very cool. Yeah. I would, I would uh, say though that like, you know, all businesses are different and all products are different. So things that work for you might not necessarily work for others and things that work for others might not work for you. Right. Uh, so it's, it's always, you know, at the end of the day, you're selling a different product than I am selling that Scott's selling or whatever. And so there are going to be a lot of different factors that come into place. Totally. And this is just a, another piece I'd like to chime in as well is that a lot of people ask if we're talking about cold emailing or we're talking about positioning or we're talking about whatever, like there is no magic bullet solution. Yeah. You have to go and make hypotheses and test things yeah. that you think might work and just keep iterating until you find something that does. And that's really the only way to do it. And it's not easy and it's not fun, but that's the only way you're going to be successful is you go out there and you try stuff and you see what works. Exactly. And I think like the more you try, the better. Um, and there's always some luck factor involved, you know, like, you know, early on with Airbnb, for example, like the, if there wasn't a democratic convention, they wouldn't have like seated their entire community. Um, you know, there's just like a lot of crazy things that can happen. So, yeah, and Craigslist and all that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, this has been a ton of fun. I, and we've talked a lot about Biznobo. Spence, I want to give you a quick chance just to tell everybody a little bit about Uncover in case there's anybody out there that could get a ton of value from the service. Sure. I mean, it's, it's really, you know, a great service that uh, started about 18 months ago. And it's really a simple tool to offer personal rewards to your employees. So basically, we have a dozen or so different categories um, from music to fitness to movie tickets to books or whatever. And you can pick like different categories to offer to your employees. So for example, music's one, a really popular one. So you can sign up for Uncover. You can offer a music perk for your employees. And your employees can choose between Spotify, iTunes, RDO, and Google Play, for example. And it's just it's, it's as easy as that. So you just sign up pick the services you want and your employees get this awesome perk every month. And it's a really cheap, inexpensive thing to offer. Um, yeah. I love it, man. So if people want more information on Uncover, it's uncover.com. Yep. You, you can just go to uncover.com or you can just email me at spencer at uncover.com. Excellent. And, and I know you also uh, share a lot of awesome startup advice, both on Twitter and on your blog. So I want to make sure people get the details on where they can connect with you there as well. Sure. So uh, my Twitter is twitter.com slash Spencer Fry and my website is just spencerfry.com. So I'm also like really good at responding to emails. So um, feel free to email me as well at email at spencerfry.com. 
Awesome. Well, guys, this has been an absolute blast. Thank you for sharing the inner details of your business, Daniel and Spence. Thanks for all the amazing advice. I really appreciate it, fellas. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it as well. Thank you. Before we finish up with today's Mindshare, I just want to say thanks for listening to another episode of The Competitive Edge. If you enjoyed the ideas in this episode and want access to all the conversations, tactics, and mind shares we'll be sharing in the future, the best thing you can do is subscribe to the Competitive Edge on iTunes. And while you're there, if you felt like this show has made a positive impact on your day, it'd be great if you could leave us a review on iTunes as well. Now, I know we covered a lot in this episode, and there might be a few key ideas or tools that you want to remember. So we went ahead and compiled all of the notes, links, and even a full searchable transcript of this conversation for you on lifelonglearner.com. That's life-longlearner.com. I also want to give you the details on a cool contest I'm running right now at lifelonglearner.com slash fun. By entering the contest, you'll have a chance to win everything from Amazon gift cards to a free month of having your very own dedicated virtual assistant to an opportunity to come and hang out with me and my buds for a few days where we'll teach you how to create your very own passive income stream. To enter this contest and learn more about everything we're giving away, head on over to lifelonglearner.com slash fun. Hey guys, welcome to another Mindshare segment. First, I'm curious. I'd love to hear what people think of this new format where we're bringing on world-class experts and people that need their advice so that we can provide actionable case studies to everybody listening. This is the first one of a few different ones I plan on testing out. And I'd really love if this is a good episode format and you really, really like this and this helped you learn. If you could just either shoot me an email at scott at lifelonglearner.com or hit me up on Twitter at Britain and just let me know whether you liked it or not. Um, Because the end goal for me is to make this the best podcast possible and to help you grow as much as possible, both in your business and life. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, I wanted to real quick give you a quick referral strategy. So one of the things that Spencer mentioned was that a great place to find new customers is to ask your existing customers if they know anybody who'd like your product or service. Great idea. And right now, I just want to give you a quick way to enhance that idea. So going out and asking people to pay for something that you're paying for often isn't the most fun thing to do. So a way that you can lower the friction to that happening and to make people actually want to do it is to give people something to give away for free, a gift more or less. So an example would be, let's say that you run a coaching or consulting practice and that you have clients and you know that other people would absolutely love to work with you and get the value that you provide to others. Well, you could go ask and say, Hey, do I know, do you know anybody else who would benefit from this? Or you could say something like to an existing client, Hey, we're giving away free hour consultations. Uh, where we're going to go over everyone's business, tell them exactly what they need to do. This usually costs $250 an hour, but you know, for a limited time, we're going to go ahead and, and give away free business audits, uh, for five of your family and or friends. Do you know anybody that would like to take advantage of this? And all of a sudden, you've now positioned this thing, which you may or may not have done do already in terms of a free consultation, as a gift for people to give, that there's only a certain amount, that there is limited, that these do have intrinsic value that you usually charge for. And this is going to increase the likelihood that people go out and give this. And you can even create something like a certificate or a little digital e-card or something for these people to give, which is going to enhance their likelihood that they're going to do it. So you can do this in a variety of ways. You could potentially do this with free trials for software, coupons, all different types of ways. But the general idea here is, is instead of just flat out asking for referrals, give your existing customers a gift to give other people, and they're going to be more likely to refer your business. Or at least I found that to be the case in my own life. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Competitive Edge. It's a new style. I think this could be really, really cool. Again, make sure to let me know over email or on Twitter if you liked it. And I really appreciate uh, everybody tuning in today and, and your time. 
I'll see you next time on The Competitive Edge. going to increase the likelihood that people go out and give this. And you can even create something like a certificate or a little digital e-card or something for these people to give, which is going to enhance the likelihood that they're going to do it. So you can do this in a variety of ways. You could potentially do this with free trials for software, coupons, all different types of ways. But the general idea here is, is instead of just flat out asking for referrals, give your existing customers a gift to give other people and they're going to be more likely to refer your business or at least i found that to be the case in my own life well i hope you've enjoyed this episode of the competitive edge it's a new style i think this could be really really cool again make sure to let me know over email or on twitter if you liked it and i really appreciate uh, everybody tuning in today and, and your time i'll see you next time on the competitive edge Oh, 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 oh,